Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Choma Ojembe. Today we'll be talking about some interesting facts about the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. And to do justice to this, I have with me a medical doctor, an environmentalist, the son of a prominent politician, and of course a passionate Nigerian. Please can we miss you? My name is Dr. Cyril Adam Toshomale. I'm a medical doctor, an environmentalist, entrepreneur, and also a philanthropist. I did my first degree in Nigeria, Amadou Bello University, where I studied medicine and surgery. I proceeded to the United States, specifically Louisiana, where I obtained my, my master's degree in public health, majoring in environmental, global environmental health, toxicology, disaster management. I also did uh, postgraduate studies at Harvard Clinical Research, another postgraduate at Queen Mary University, London, gastroenterology, and I'm also a student of Southern California University studying my MBA. I've done several uh, medical courses and other fields. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. That's quite a resume. Thank you for your response. You're welcome. Up until now, some Nigerians still don't believe in the COVID-19 pandemic. What do you have to say about that? Do you think the awareness created hasn't been enough? Or some people choose not to just believe in the pandemic? Well, I don't think that people choose not to believe. Uh, what I think, what I see is a lot of what I would describe as information fatigue. Okay. So many information out there, mm -hmm. so many conspiracy theory out there, lack of trust from government, people are living on edge, there is hunger, there's economic problems, there are issues. And then to compound with this COVID-19 is it's not easy. So I, I get that. Okay. Wearing a mask 247 or all the time and not be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And especially when this pandemic started, face masks like in Nigeria went almost 1,000% the, the increase in face masks. Yeah. People were not able to buy essential medications. Everything went skyrocketed. Okay. So, and already people are living on edge. Palliative was not going, was not reaching the downtrodden. You can't compare it to places like the US when people, where the government gave bailouts, gave about $1,200 to people who were single, $1,500 and beyond, and to other people. So, it's not easy for you to enforce law, to enforce total lockdown, people will not be able to, they have to choose between living in hunger okay. or being alive and dying of COVID-19 or, or wearing face masks and not going to work or there's a lot of mistrust, a lot of, it's, it's a whole package, it's not something you can just point in points to say. Okay. So there are so many why. factors that... Yeah, it's, a, know, it's multifactorial. All right. There is certainly misinformation about the COVID-19 spread. And, you know, some other factors, so many things have been coming up and people don't really know which one to believe. That's probably part of the reason why some people don't believe. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about how rapid the virus spread is across the nation. Would you really say it's prevalent in Nigeria? Well, thank you for your question. Uh, as regards misinformation, I think I want to capitalize more on that. Okay. Because information is power. Right. What separates you from your professor is the information he has that you don't have. What separates you from your teacher is the information that he has that you don't have. Okay. Coming down to COVID-19, there's a lot of misinformation. Mm -hmm. And government is trying, but government alone cannot do it all. Mm -hmm. We need to enlighten our people about this virus that is real. In 2002, when we first had our first pandemic, that was the severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS, and then we had another one in 2012 that happened in the Middle East. We called our Middle East respiratory syndrome, okay. and then we used the last one. And the that most of them came from animal zoonotic diseases. Now, when it comes to misinformation, yeah. people believe that, for example, when government passes laws and says you shouldn't have more than 20 people gathering, or maybe if it's a church, more than 50 people. I think they are not doing justice to that because even if it's just two people in church and they're not observing social distancing, they're not wearing their face masks, mm -hmm. they're not keeping adequate space, they can still be transmission. 
So it's not just the number of people that you have in a gathering that matters, but how do you keep, how do you mitigate okay. the spread? You can have just two people, like the what happened in South Korea, you can go to a church, one person can spread it. Okay. You can have 50 people in an, in an auditorium and they'll be special and they'll be well spaced and they might not be spread. But you can also have two people and two clothes without protection. So it's not just the numbers, but you have to look at how this thing works, how it spreads. And in terms of misinformation, again, I see a lot of people saying oh, all kinds of stuff. You drink water and then the water uh, just flushes the virus down to your stomach and then you are You know, a lot of misinformation. And we, I think we, need to, do, we need to do more to enlighten our people. Okay. Coming from an environmental background, would you say that there are some environmental factors that affect the spread of COVID-19 in Nigeria? Well, that's a very interesting question. As an environmentalist, I look at the world from the, from the lens of an environmentalist. Anything you see around you and feel around you is part of the environment. Okay. This chair, this bottle water, the clothes you are wearing, your face masks, everything around you, your chemical, what you put on, the creams, the battery, batting soap and everything and all that. When it comes to COVID-19, you know that when you touch a contaminated surface, mm -hmm. you can contact this virus. When you drink, uh, when you put your hand, for example, someone who is a patient okay. and held this bottle this. water and after some minutes, and another person comes and holds the same bottle, we can, there could be transmission right. from non-living things to non-living things and then to human being, so the environment plays a very vital role. That's why you tell you keep six feet, always wash your hand because you keep touching surfaces as well as a human being. We're not spirits, we are physical beings. So okay. the environment is, is one of the most important contributing factors. Okay, so we just you know? have to pay attention to everything yes. around us. Clean the environment, disinfect your house, disinfect your car, disinfect wherever your phone, because you always with your phone, disinfect it, your bio, disinfect it all the time because you can. Now, I'll give you my pen, you use it after we have COVID-19, and then you use it, you use that same hand to clean your eyes or something. So, environment, environmental factors that feels one of the priorities. If we can handle that, we should be able to mitigate the pandemic. So, we see lots of people carrying out their businesses without wearing a face mask and observing the NCDC protocols. You know, would you say that the precautionary measures are inadequate? and there are still measures people could put in place to help curtail the spread of the virus. Yes, I quite agree with you when it comes to people not taking adequate measures to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. I believe that NCDC are doing their level best, sending text messages, jingles on TV, and addressing the press almost on a daily basis. But what you have to understand, there are still people who don't believe that America went to the moon. So no matter what you do, the people that are still going to be the naysayers who will believe that it doesn't exist. So just do your best as government is doing. But I think our religious leaders, since we we are in a, we are a very religious country and we most times believe more on our pastors, imam, bishop. So I believe if our religious leaders can tell our people they might believe, but with the conspiracy theory going on, it's going to be challenging because people believe there's a lot. There's a whole lot of things that have to do with COVID-19. With all these measures that are not in place, you know, there's been a prediction about a second wave of the virus spread. How prepared are we for that? I like your question concerning prediction about a second wave of the, the pandemic. So like, I would say a third wave or a fourth wave. Just like the Middle East respiratory syndrome, even last year, there were over, over 200 cases, but we didn't hear about it. The first incident was in 2020, in 2012. So like this one, the might not be the last time, but what we need to do as a country is to have a coordinated integrated management system where you have people of different expertise, all walks of life. Medical doctors, the pharmacists will come, the engineers will come, even the religious leaders will come because they have a lot of influence on our people. And then government should invest more on healthcare to strengthen our healthcare system. How prepared are we for a second wave because we're lucky that this pandemic didn't really affect us, if our statistics are right anyway, because we have problem with keeping data. So the take home is 
We should invest more on healthcare. We should invest more in informing our people, giving them the right information from reliable source like the CDC, NCDC, and the WHO. And that will help us, you know, in case there's another virus outbreak. We don't pray for that. But, well, we don't pray for it, but as it is right from Barbican time, it would have always been an epidemic. So this might not yeah. be the last one. Even if it's not, not the COVID-19, certainly any other else. thing. So okay. we should be prepared by stretching our healthcare system, coming together, working as a team from right. engineers, doctors, pharmacists, lawmakers to prevent enact laws, and our religious leaders too. So, Doc. Concerning these environmental issues and advice and all of that that you gave to the government, you know, I want you to talk to a common Nigerian out there watching and who would want to take precautionary measures. What advice do you have to give to them? Thank you for your question. Uh, I want to respond by saying first things first. Mm -hmm. But Einstein once said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. We should wear our face masks properly, covering the nose, the mouth. If possible, wear your face shield, because some people can cough and all that throw up, especially on your face. Observe social distancing, enough adequate space. Also, hand hygiene. Wash your hands with water, soap and water. When that's not available or when it's not convenient, use your hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your face. Avoid touching your face mask, the front of your face mask, and open your eyes. And if you want to remove your face mask, do it from inside out, not to contaminate your hand. So that should be our take home. Okay. Easy as that. That's the much we have for you today on the show. Hope you've learned a lot. Thank you so much viewers for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.